Hello, welcome everyone. My name is Leela Rhodes and I'll be your moderator today. Thank you so much for joining us here at Netcom Learning, a market leader in promoting lifelong learning, training, and talent development solutions. We are very excited to host today's webinar, Master the Power of AI with Microsoft Azure. Presenting today's topic is Yatart Kapoor, and Yatart has over five years of experience delivering a variety of trainings on Microsoft products, including Microsoft Azure, Office 365, SCVMM, Hyper-V, Windows Server, and Yatart has been skilled and proficient on cloud computing platforms like Microsoft Azure Cloud, Google Cloud Platform, Office 365 Platform, and MS Exchange Server Management. Now, please bear in mind that this is just an overview of a very robust topic. We do offer a collection of technical and business courses that can be tailored towards your specific requirements. So if you're interested in a further discussion about any of those, you can make an appointment with our learning consultants through our website at www.netcomlearning.com. Netcom Learning helps customers build innovative learning organizations by achieving a smarter workforce, adopting change and driving growth. We do this with a broad catalog of offerings, developing customized learning plans and our global delivery capabilities. Since 1998, we have been empowering organizations with our managed learning services to help them reach optimal performance results and address challenges. We have nine practice areas in which we specialize and they, and they encompass people, process and technology training. Today's presentation is from the data and AI practice area. Netcom Learning offers a comprehensive training portfolio for data and AI courses, and our upcoming classes include various trainings on AZ900, DP900, AI900, and many more. Private training to teams is also available, and those learning plans can be customized to the specific needs of that audience. You can also access a variety of data and AI marketing assets, such as the free two-hour training, by clicking on the available webinar handout. And these offerings can be found with a simple search on our website at www.netcomlearning.com. And now I'm going to go ahead and pass the time over to you, Tart, to present today's topic. You should be able to share your screen now. Thank you so much. Uh, and I hope my screen is visible, right? Yes, it is. <laughs> oh, perfect. So uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, as Leila introduced uh, the topics, uh, we'll be talking about uh, power of AI with Microsoft Azure. This discussion will be uh, encompassing what we'll be uh, what AI is and what ML means. These are like buzzwords, but what they actually mean in uh, in in a cloud context and how uh, how Microsoft actually approaches them as well, right? So uh, let's get on with this. Uh, now uh, we'll start with introduction to AI workloads and basic considerations, uh, how it goes, fundamental principles of machine learning, how machine learning is different from AI, uh, and how how we implement it on Azure, what uh, things are available in Azure to be able to leverage them, uh, basic understanding of features for computer vision, what's vision, what's NLP, natural language processing, and conversational AI workloads, uh, and how they work on Azure. So basic purpose or uh, or the basic theme of this webinar, I would say, is going to be AI and ML, but with context of Microsoft Azure. Uh, and then I'll go over one of the exam details that uh, we have AI 900, and then we'll have a small uh, Q&A session. So awesome, let's get started with this. What is AI? This is kind of a buzz term nowadays. Uh, what AI might be, and people have their own uh, several different definitions of what AI might mean or has meant for a lot of years. Uh, simply put, uh, AI is basically a software that would imitate human behaviors and capabilities, uh, to put it simply. So if you're trying to simulate uh, human intelligence and capabilities by means of a computer software, uh, that software could be, a, well, that software could be as large as something of an operating system or, or could be as small as a small logic application within a cloud platform. Size does not matter for that, uh, or size or complexity does not matter in that situation. It would still be AI. We'll get into it and we'll understand what that might mean. Uh, there are several different types of AI that you can get into. Machine learning is one of them. Machine learning and AI are not different, but machine learning is more of a subcategory of AI. So machine learning is often the foundation of an AI system. 
it's here we where where an AI where a system is taught to draw conclusions and predict from a certain data right certain data set if you do not have any data you can't make any predictions you can't definitely make any conclusions out of it so data being in the center of it all and we'll talk more about this one as well uh, next is anomaly discussion capability to detect errors and error detection system could be used in context of security could be used in context of manufacturing could be used in context of quality control anomaly detection can be automated as well and can be a part of ai computer vision when we uh, when we talk about a system uh, which visually would interpret the world which would visually interpret the environment that's around it uh, you you could use you may have seen like matlab models made from this so the so that you can just uh, draw conclusions of the road uh, uh, draw more inference about the roads that you that your car is on right something like that so automated vehicles are big on computer vision and not just that security systems are big on computer vision right facial detection software is there moving on we have natural language processing capability of a system to be able to interpret understand comprehend any written or spoken language of any kind does not the accent does not matter the way that you speak the language does not matter the gram grammar does not matter we would train the system in such a way where all of these natural things about anybody's not all of these natural things about anybody's language or the way of speaking can be ignored and the system can still understand all of these things then next is conversational ai might seem a little similar to natural language processing but it's not conversational ai is different from speaking to a computer it's it's basically having a conversation with it uh, so you may have seen things like chatbots uh, how do you create chat box chatbots and how do they respond based on your input so that it might seem like you're actually talking to a real person or you are talking to a person or assistant that can actually provide you some help based on the input that you provide to it so all of these are ai ai does not mean that hey there would be a robot that's roaming around in terminator verse no not really ai can be all of these things now how does machine learning work very simple like we discussed on the last slide right from your text messages to, to your photographs to the videos that you take to the sound bites that you record all of this is data that can be used to train our model right uh, now we, when we talk about uh, data what that might actually mean is that data would be something some some sort of stored information right that could be anything uh, about the system that you're going to be uh, perform, performing uh, machine learning on right or deploying the uh, deploying the training model on and you would have several input methods for that uh, if if you're talking about twitter that's that the data on twitter can be an input model uh, if if you're talking about uh, cars or homes or public transport that you might have in the factories there there can be several hundred sensors telling uh, a system how a machine is working or what metrics uh, the machine is setting up right now so that we can monitor and health check it all of these things would still fall under machine learning when we aggregate such a large amount of data create models on it then train the model to make predictive uh, predictive decisions or predictive calls that's what we call machine learning right so data scientists uh, can use all of this data to train these machine learning models so that inferences and predictions can be made based on the relationship amongst these data sets that uh, we have in our system so no rocket science it's just like how anything learns a baby learns like this right so uh, you you don't just learn to pick up a language as a baby you see people around you you, you hear random words random noises at first they are then they start to make sense then they start to make sense over the period of two three four years now there are two major differences here the compute is much larger than well a child's brain and the data the amount of information that has to be processed is huge and the time that it it takes to process that information is significantly less so that's where machine learning comes in so in context of microsoft azure where does machine learning stand when we talk about Microsoft Azure, uh, it's it's been it's been one of the oldest cloud platforms, right? It's one of the big three: uh, AWS, Google Cloud Platform, and Azure. Uh, what Microsoft does with it is they uh, 
they have something called as a as azure machine learning which is a platform for you to perform all your ai training predictions validations and retraining models actually right so i'll just get into that as well right so anytime you are going to be setting up and uh, setting up a machine learning model first thing you will do is that you will train that model you have created that model now you will train it right once the training has been done for the model once you have gathered enough information about that these inputs would cause certain outputs you would package the data and validate it whether that's whether that meets the acceptance criteria or not if uh, if you understand that uh, so we are going to be validating our models and once you validate it you would deploy the, that as an application a web application or some other sort of a function application that can be mostly web application by the way and then once you deploy it you monitor it so this basically is that you started with the data and what you can do with inputs and outputs and finally you get to a point where you have a major application now you don't stop there you don't just create an application and set not really you're still gathering data you're still trying to reiterate this process retrain your model repackage it revalidate it redeploy it so that it's a very well sorted system right that's what we are trying to do here uh, and in order to do this microsoft azure provides you a lot of stuff uh, that's built into that comes uh, that comes out of the box with machine learning uh, in microsoft azure right uh, so one of those things would be that this would enable non experts to quickly create any effective machine learning model from data you you might have cert certain amount of data you want to create machine learning models you can use something called as auto ml right auto ml is uh, we don't really call it automated machine learning we just call it auto ml in in that situation and it will enable you to create random al to test random algorithms against your data to make a great model actually uh, next is the designer designer is a graphic interface if you if you do not know how to code, you do not know Python, you do not know R, no need to worry, you don't have to learn it. If you learn it, that would be more convenient, but that's not a basic limiting factor or a prerequisite for you to start learning or implementing machine learning. So you can always use learning designer for that. It's a graphical interface enabling no code dev development of machine learning solutions. Now, you can create notebooks in R and Python and create pipelines to deliver end-to-end -end solutions in case of um, ML in Azure, or as we call it, Azure ML, right? So, so you can use pipelines. You can use, you can integrate it with DevOps. You can uh, integrate it with your CI/CD pipelines, and you can write your code in Python and R. Pretty, pretty common, fairly common, and fairly uh, popular languages, right? That you can use for the notebooks right here. So, certain services in Microsoft Azure that we will be talking about one of them would be a vision right vision would be just like we talked about it would give you a computer vision it would give you uh it would give you an ability to uh to use images and videos to gather data from them right so one of those services is called computer vision so you can use this service to able to be able to analyze image and video and be able to extract things like text things like objects, what that object might mean, things like tags, what this place is, things like descriptions, what is happening in this picture. All that information can be extracted from uh, by using this tool called, or the service rather, called computer vision. Next is custom vision, where you would train your custom image classification model by multiple images you would enter the images into it. You want to create a model that can identify cats for you. You will feed it images of cats every once in a while a dog as well right so that it learns to differentiate what kind of first yeah we are looking at something that is standing on four legs right it's not a table it might it because it has a head it might be an animal then what kind of animal it might be so so that your model can sit now this is a very rudimentary basic example you can uh, extrapolate this to do major major things with your data uh, well and not limited to like identifying counterfeit uh, transactions on on a particular bank server it's again several usages of a very simple service right next is facial recognition you can uh, you can create facial detection models and facial recognition solutions for security uh, by using this one and yeah 
you may have a notice uh, you may have noticed this feature that that has really recently entered into the ios realm is that you can still use your you can still use your facial detection while you have your mask on right how do you think uh, that uh, that would be one of the examples of this uh, a similar service to this right uh, form recognizer would give you the exact information about the exact forms or invoices uh, or what they are right so basically like a, an application to scan a check or something like that after that we have something called as a conversational ai what's conversational ai like i told you before things like chatbots uh, things like a system where you put the input and it has a uh, you put the input and you get the output that you desire you want to get the information as fast as possible um, you may want to connect to a person uh, for every once in a while hey i want to talk to customer support but why do you want to talk to customer support in the first place is that sometimes you don't trust that hey i don't think the chatbot would be able to help me because my uh, concern is very quote unquote customized chatbots do exactly that right so we enter and we train those bots with all the use cases and fringe cases so that uh, no matter how customized or how <laughs> different your query might be from a, a regular faq it can still answer that or it can lead you to a place where you can get the answer or lead you to a person if i can't answer that right so it adds a layer in the chain of communication but it removes a lot of complexity because you do not have to wait for a customer care representative to be action so it's infinitely scalable basically i do not have to uh, as a company owner i do not have to hire let's say a thousand people to be able to uh, help a thousand customers at one point of time so it's 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 infinitely scalable as well conversational ai would also include your uh, your home automation and personal devices like siri like uh, um, like Alexa or like Google Home, so all of these things would be a part of conversational AI as well, right? Not just a chat box. Now, with everything, there are certain pros and certain cons, right? Uh, there are certain cons and there are certain uh, risks that are there with AI. Now, the thing is, it's risk is not end of the world. Risk is not that it's going to turn into matrix and uh, robots have taken control over the world. That's not the risk I'm talking about. I'm talking about the more real and more palpable risks that you can see right now or uh, you or you can see more in an everyday life right now right certain times your data or the data that you train somebody with might lead them to form a bias you, you may have a bias about certain things right uh, it, it could be a sim simple thing it's like you would say that hey hockey is the best sport in the world turns out that all your life you were trained you were watching three sports you were watching like soccer hockey and maybe boxing and you liked hockey the best so you think hockey is the best sport in the world but sometimes there's no way to tell right or sometimes maybe you do not have enough information to be able to make the call that something is the best simple example right but biases with data can affect results one of the example would be a loan approval model uh, may start to discriminate by gender if you feed it too many uh, too many profiles or too much data with a single gender right so you want to keep your data sets as diverse as possible right errors may cause harm when we say a thing is automated when we say a service is automated we expect it to be we expect the results to be very predictable right we do not want any outliers it's it's great like uh, if if my uh, if my automated car is uh, going to detect a stop sign i want to detect i want it to detect 100% of the stop signs it can't be 99% I, I don't want to run a stop sign or or a signal for that matter or a person for that matter <laughs> errors can be a major problem now i took like the most dangerous error case that you can take for smaller cases there can be errors in the system that can get uh, uh, that can get compounded with every iteration it's it's like the weather uh, the weather predictive models right uh, you you would see that uh, on your apps like accuweather and apple weather you would see that they can predict weather really nicely and really accurately for the next 3 days but after 4 days 5 days 10 days or 15 days the predictions are not that great you know why because 
every time there is certain error in the data in the predictive model and as far you go on that predictive model model the error starts to get well starts to get uh, compounded exponentially so you do not want those errors to get compounded your data could be exposed to your uh, diagnostic models uh, in in a medical system might give out the pii or the kind of disease a person might have that's not great solutions may not work for everyone everything is not for everyone there is no one solution that would fix it all that would do everything for you that's it's not really a possibility. Everyone has different problems. Different problems require different solutions. So a home solution that might be great uh, for a person with, uh, for a person uh, that might need a visual, uh, that might be visually impaired. They might need a home system that works solely on audio and no visual cues. You would need that. But if it doesn't have that audio thing in it or audio feature in it, it's useless for a person like that. Right, so it's 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 just an example, right? Uh, it can vary from different from person to person, right? Users must be able to trust a complex system, right? AI-based financial tools making financial recommendations, great. Do you trust them? If you do, yes, that's great. If a model is great, the model has performed well in the past. Of course, you'll trust them, right? If it doesn't, or if you don't trust them, you are not going to go with that system. And who is liable for AI-driven decisions, right? Who is going to be uh, answerable if something goes wrong? So we really, really need to find out that, or we really, really need to decide who is uh, answerable or who is going to have the responsibility for a certain program to malfunction. And we want to keep those malfunctions to a bare minimum. Okay. Moving on, uh, there's an exam that's related to uh, this course, uh, uh, to this uh, webinar, and I'll get to that in my next slides, right? So uh, just give me one moment, I'll share another set of slides with you. And just give me a moment here. Now, uh, the next step, we, we've discussed what AI might mean or it might mean in context of Microsoft Azure. Uh, now the thing the next thing would be what what to do with this information how can you uh, what exams can you take and uh, how can this benefit you uh, so as your training journey for data and ai pros if you have worked with data before if you have worked with microsoft uh, data on microsoft azure before dp300 is a great starting point for you if you have been a db in the past great if you have not been a db in the past but you have a basic understanding of databases on Azure, this is something that you can start with. And moving on, uh, you can go into DP203 uh, or DP100. I'll, I'll just get to those in a second, right? Before you get into all these uh, associate level exams, as we call them, or intermediate level certifications, as we call them, uh, you must be very comfortable with the basics. It's not really a prerequisite, for you to be able to uh, do these basic exams, but it helps. It really helps in uh, the comprehension part of it, right? So you can always take Azure Fundamentals AZ900 basic exam, right? Really uh, focuses on the basics of Microsoft Azure uh, and the fundamentals of cloud computing, not just the basics of Microsoft Azure. Uh, goes into uh, next is DP900, okay? You know the basics of Azure, great. You do you know the basics of uh, databases in Azure? Now, these are not related. You can just straight away start with DP900. Databases in Azure, how Azure SQL works, how, how man, what managed instances are, uh, simple basic stuff, right? Even a little bit of Cosmos DB and AI in this one as well. Next is, if you are an AI enthusiast, um, of course you are because you are attending this web webinar after all. So this would be a great, uh, certification training slash exam for you to take AI 900 focuses on basics of AI and ML and AI and ML on Microsoft Azure. Really simple stuff, really, really interesting stuff. It's a very simple training too. Uh, one great thing about all these three exams is that once you take them, once you pass them, you never have to take them throughout your life, never expire infinite validity of these exams so keep that in mind right these are really really interesting if you want to go a little deeper into it db300 is a good one if you are a dba uh, 
if you want to go uh, if you want to go more into data engineering side of the things right not just administration i want to go into deep dive into engineering 203 is a great exam db203 data engineer associate if you are interested in data science which you might be because this is a course that would that would go flow nicely into data engineering or data science as well then dp100 is a thing that you can uh, do as well pl 300 is a good power bi data analyst course if you are a data engineer it's it's a good course to do next right so these are good trainings to have for microsoft certifications you would know that microsoft certifications are are broken down into three parts now it's kind of hard to track sometimes there are exactly 20 azure certifications not even mentioning uh, office 365 and uh, a Windows Server and stuff like that. Not, not really. Just, just as your so many trainings. So, uh, feel free to get in touch with uh, somebody from Netcom so that they can explain you which trainings might be the best for you. Right. So, uh, certifications are broken down into three parts: fundamentals, associate, and expert. These are role-based certifications. These never expire. They expire in about a year and a half. These expire in about two years. Exp expert ones. And what do you do when they expire? Next slide, right? And there are certain specialty certifications as well, like IoT developer, AZ networking and stuff, stuff like that. So all these courses are taught by Microsoft certified trainers with real world use cases, right? And you will get 365 days to your recordings of any instructor led training. So that's, that's not bad at all, right? Uh, and you can do free repeats as well if you like. What are the benefits of getting these certifications? Uh, you know the benefits of getting certified uh, if you're working in IT, right? So um, you get greater recognition of your skills due to validation. Now, now they know that Microsoft has validated you on your skills. You are certified then, of course. It, it is a, one, it's a good starting point in a conversation, in an interview. Sometimes it's even a minimum requirement to apply for a job, right? So that's really, really important. 23% of Microsoft certified technology technologists earn up to 20% more. So on these slides, you will also find certain links that you can uh, go ahead and check these sources out at, right? Now, let the data speak. For this webinar, you would also receive uh, a free uh, a free book, a free ebook. So you can just check this out and uh, it's, it's, it's a really interesting one as well, right? So how training improves time, uh, timeliness, insights, and business impact. And uh, what are the advantages of getting trained or getting your teamed, teams trained rather, right? So well-trained and certified teams are almost 20% more productive than other stuff, right? So that's, that's a good uh, thing to know usually. So some facts about the certification renewals, your certifications have expired after one year. If it's an associate two years, if it's an expert one, what to do? You do not have to retest. Earlier, you had to go uh, go ahead, book the exam again, get recertified, and uh, do the cycle again every, every one year to year. Now, that's not the case. You can maintain your Microsoft certification with a continuous learning mindset and keep it at no cost because six months before your certification expires 180 days before microsoft will drop you an email hey dude your certification is expiring do you want to renew it if yes then you can validate your skills by going to their websites taking a couple of self-paced learning classes not really the classes even sometimes like they can be learn.microsoft courses and yeah you have to take a very small test not a certification a very small test right that can have 10 to 20 questions and boom you're recertified for two years for one year whatever the certificate is right so to renew your certification pass the associated assessment on microsoft learn before your certification expires and you can take multiple chances at that even if you fail that's okay you can take another chance at that uh, so do not miss this opportunity to renew any of the certifications that you might have gotten even right now renew them They're really really important to renew. So let's get certified and trained and that was it for me So thank you so much guys uh, all Over to Leila Thank you so much. We're actually going to get to a question and answer session in just a moment here. But before we do, I want to give the presentation rights over to Sagnik. He's our vendor manager. He's going to introduce some of our promotions and webinar related courses. Sagnik. Hi, Leela. Hi. Um, so uh, 
it has been a long day and uh, the session was insightful thank you for that uh, i would just take a few moment of uh, our participants to take everyone quickly through some of the resources that we have collated together that we find would be adding value to the skilling journeys that everyone is interested in so first up uh, you would be getting this webinar handout as part of our presentation today and this uh, contains a uh, certain information that you might find valuable. Uh, first is a brief introduction about NetCom Learning. So we have been in the industry for over 23 years now, and we have served over 14,000 enterprise customers and trained 150,000 plus professionals. Uh, we are uh, an authorized training partner with all the major vendors in the IT and uh, business uh, space uh, all across the world. So some of the major names uh, include Microsoft, AWS, Cisco, Comcia, Axelos, PMI, Easy Council, you name it, we have accreditations with them. So you get the highest quality of training uh, support from NetCom Learning. So we really support end-to-end -end upskilling requirements. Um, you would find the recording link to today's session and this handout as well. So feel free to go through it in order to revise the topics that have been covered today. As part of the learning experience, we are providing all the participants today free access to our NetCom 365 portal. It is a real uh, gold mine of valuable resources and assets uh, to support and empower you in your uh, skilling journey. So feel free to log in, activate your accounts and explore. You'd find multiple webinars, assessments uh, and other resources in here. Feel free to explore the courses across vendors. We really uh, believe you would find this really helpful. Some of the latest offers that we have currently, uh, if you are interested in security, uh, for Microsoft, we have a very special promotion going on, valid till the 30th of June, 2022, wherein with the official VILT course, you are going to get a free exam voucher as well as a practice test. Now, it cannot be uh, more emphasized uh, the value of uh, scaling and uh, the validation on, that you receive through a certification. It is the official seal of approval directly from the vendor itself, Microsoft. So feel free uh, to explore these courses. It is ap applicable across the entire Microsoft security portfolio. That includes SC900, SC200, 300, 400, AC500, and MS500. All the links are here. Feel free to explore these and uh, take advantage of this promotion while you have the chance. Um, apart from security, if uh, you are exploring and you're trying to really figure out what uh, specific uh, scaling requirements you have, uh, maybe beyond specific product lines, right? So the entire Microsoft training portfolio is covered under our Microsoft scaling program. So we are talking about Azure, Security, Microsoft 365, Dynamics 365, and Power Platform. So really end-to-end -end, uh, upscaling requirements can be met through one single solution, and it really provides uncomparable advantages, when, especially when it comes to team upscaling or enterprise upscaling. So if you are a business owner, if you have a team, if you're managing a team and you are aware that uh, your team needs to be upskilled. Multiple pay multiple members of your team need to needs training across a variety of products. Feel free to explore our Microsoft Scaling program. The starting uh, process is really simple and it is free of cost. Uh, you can schedule a call with our learning consultants and they would discuss your specific needs and assess your requirements and based on based on your specific. Uh, objectives and expectations, uh, an optimized Microsoft scaling plan would be developed and deployed. Uh, and you would get exclusive benefits, like you can save up to 8% on the pricing. Uh, there we uh, provide easy enrollment, so you get personalized microsites that can be deployed within your organizations for easy enrollment uh, of your employees. And you get the full features of NetCom 365, and it really provides 
a 360 degree upskilling experience. Uh, some facts about certifications have been mentioned here once again, things that have already been covered by our instructor. And the link to the Win Win of Certification ebook has been provided here. Feel free to go through this, and you would be uh, getting real world evidence on the ROI of uh, investing in uh, certifications, both from an employee as well as employer perspective. We have a Netcom Plus subscription um, that really is a great tool if you are looking for an individual learner subscription. So it is only applicable for individuals. Uh, so th what you get as part of this offering is uh, for $2,999 per learner per year, you get unlimited access to 500 plus official training courses, including 60 courses from Microsoft itself. So it comprises multiple vendors beyond Microsoft like AWS, Cisco, and uh, all the other vendors that we have as part of our portfolio. You get 12 month access and it gives you that flexibility of continuing your skilling journey uh, throughout the year. If you're looking for something which is more uh, Focus towards uh, the scaling of uh, the scaling requirements of your entire team. Learning Passport is the solution that is going to certainly uh, take your uh, training uh, uh, training uh, efforts to the next level. It is a flexible team training package, so that means it is not uh, linked or locked to a specific learner, as in the case of Netcom Plus. It is a shared uh, fund value that you invest and you maximize it by up to 100%. So uh, it is a prepaid fund that can be redeemable over 4,000 plus official courses all across our entire vendor portfolio of Microsoft, AWS, Cisco, all the way through EC Council, PMI, and uh, you. It is again valid for 12 months, so feel free to explore this if you are an enterprise looking to upskill your employees. Last but not least, we have uh, the recommended learning path uh, for the data and AI professionals as recommended by Microsoft. So all the courses have been linked here. The certifications have been mapped. Feel free to explore these. And once again, once you enroll with Netcom Learning, you get access to virtual labs for 180 days, along with 365 day access to the class recordings, which really uh, is an unbeatable value when it comes to the learner experience. Also feel free to explore and check out our upcoming master classes. Uh, today's session was a webinar. Our master class sessions are also free of cost, but these are more extensive, uh, typically two hours or more. We have a session coming up on Microsoft 365 and security. Feel free to explore and enroll for those. Uh, before I hand over, just our website, www.netcomlearning.com. Feel free to come here, explore the entire portfolio that we have, specifically on Microsoft. Uh, please feel free to go here and explore the courses that uh, match your needs. We have the entire catalog present here, apps under apps and infra, under data and AI. Today's topic, you can go to Azure and you can explore all the courses that are related to today's topic of discussion. Lastly, uh, we also have uh, promotions going on from time to time. So feel free to explore our promotion section on the website. Uh, and especially for the teams uh, that are looking uh, to upskill multiple members, feel free to explore our free private group training sessions on uh, Microsoft Dynamics 365 Power Platform and Teams. Uh, feel free to go through these offerings. Uh, these can be customized as per your team's specific needs. These are free of cost to our private group training sessions. So with that, uh, I'd like to welcome you all uh, to the Netcom Learning uh, community and feel free to go through all our resources and get in touch with us and we can guide you in your skilling journey. Thank you so much. Right back to you, Lisa. Thank, thank you so much. We are actually, uh, we got about two minutes before uh, Guitar has to get off. If you do have a question, we're going to try to answer them as quickly as possible. We'll get to our very first one right away. Um, what is the difference between AI and ML? Like, like we discussed before, uh, the difference is uh, very simple. Uh, AI is 
a simulation of uh, any human intelligence and capabilities by a computer software you just create a simulation ml is kind of a subset to it uh, they're not really something that you can put a difference between but yeah it, ml is kind of a subcategory of ai so that a, a system or a model can draw conclusions and predict from the data yes thank you you got time for one more question sure yeah okay um do i need to know programming to take this course um interesting depends upon the context if we are talking about fundamental courses like ai 900 then not really uh, even without the knowledge of programming like programming languages like python or r you can still uh, work with Azure ML platform and still create machine learning platforms, still understand the concepts, still be able to understand the business aspect of it. May not be able to go into details of creating models and stuff like that. So it would be a good learning experience uh, for, uh, for associate and expert level courses. That would help a lot, but for basic courses, absolutely not. Thank you. And I know we're out of time with you today, even though we could take so much more of your time because you have so much knowledge to give us. We want to thank you really quick for joining us. In addition to today's webinar, we have a lot of informative webinars com and coming up. So please go to www.netcomlearning.com forward slash webinars forward slash to register for any of those. Uh, we want to thank you all for joining us today. If you do come up with any additional questions, please feel free to send them to us at webinar at netcomlearning.com at any time. And we hope that you found today's webinar to be very informative. We look forward to seeing you back here with us very soon. Also, feel free to tell your friends and colleagues about our webinars and other courses. Once again, thank you everyone for joining us and have a wonderful day.